What's up everybody and welcome back to another video today we're going to be talking about why Gojo should have won the fight against Sukuna back in chapter 223 through 236. I've been wanting to make this video for such a long time but I've been waiting for the manga to come to an end. I personally needed to see how this fight was going to end and who was going to stop Sukuna. I mean we all knew Yuji was going to be the one that defeated Sukuna but the biggest question that remained was how was Yuji going? Going to defeat him because if daddy gojo couldn't have got the job done how was yuji itidori going to finish the job the power difference between those two is absolutely insane and gojo just surpasses him in every level but let's set all of that aside and let's get into the video on why gojo vs sukuna was bs before we get into the video, please for me, like and subscribe to the channel, it helps me a ton and keeps me motivated to make more videos. So Gojo vs Sukuna, let's get into it. And starting with Gojo, let's just go over some of his powers, techniques, and his overall physical capabilities. Starting with his technique, Gojo has the Limitless Technique, in which if you don't know, Gojo's Limitless Technique allows him to manipulate space and create barriers that can stop attacks before they reach him. This gives him such a significant defense edge over Sukuna. And number 2, Gojo has the Six Eyes. His six eyes ability enhances his perception and understanding of cursed energy allowing him to see and predict his opponent's moves which could most definitely help him counter Sukuna's attacks effectively. And number three we got his strength and speed. Gojo is incredibly fast and powerful making it difficult for most opponents to keep up with him. His physical prowess and combat skills are just top tier. And that brings us to number four his experience. Gojo has extensive experience fighting curses and I'm gonna butcher this word but skilled sorcerers. But this one I'm a little bit shaky on because we all know Sukuna is over a thousand years old. So Sukuna is gonna have the advantage with experience. Lastly but not least is Gojo's strategic mind. Gojo is not only a powerful fighter but also a strategic thinker. He can analyze situations quickly and adapt to his tactics accordingly. I mean we all seen what Gojo did in Shibuya when he opened his domain expansion for two tenths of a second. And with what happened to all the curses in Sub civilians that were there. Does anyone actually realize how insane that is? And speaking of domain expansions, Gojo's domain expansion is so overpowered it's insane. But that's enough about Gojo, let's talk about some of Sukuna's abilities. Number 1, Sukuna's Cursed Energy. Sukuna has some insane amount of cursed energy, allowing him to execute powerful techniques and enhance his physical abilities. And number 2, Sukuna's domain expansion. His domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, allows him to instantly cut his opponents within range making it nearly impossible to escape. It creates such a lethal area where he can attack without limits. And number 3, Sukuna's curse techniques. Sukuna could use various curse techniques including Dismantle, a technique that allows him to slice through anything with precision, and Cleave, a powerful attack that can affect cursed spirits and humans dealing damage based on their strength. And and that brings us to his immense physical prowess. Sukuna has superhuman strength, speed, and reflexes making him a terrifying opponent in close combat. Okay so now those are both out of the way, let's get into why Gojo should have won. I mean to be honest, it is super simple on why Gojo should have won this fight. So let's just start with the fact that it was a 3 on 1. Some of the panels in Jujutsu Kaisen looks like Gojo is the villain. It was Gojo vs Sukuna, Ajito, and Maharaga. I am fully convinced that if it was Gojo vs Sukuna in a fair 1v1, Gojo mops the floor with Sukuna. And I'm so sick and tired of anybody else telling me otherwise. For instance, look at the end of the manga. Sukuna has run the gauntlet and has barely done any damage to anybody. Most of the characters are still alive and breathing with some exceptions. But don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be a Sukuna hater. I know Sukuna surpasses Gojo on some physical abilities and even techniques. Sukuna is strong and somewhat overpowered and when he ran the gauntlet he was getting jumped and it was one character after another. But really and honestly just picture this. 
Gojo and Sukuna fighting at a fair and equal terms. Meaning, Sukuna didn't have Maharaga or Ajito. If Gojo can 100% focus on just defeating Sukuna and not Maharaga or Ajito, who do you think wins that? You would be lying to yourself if you say Sukuna still wins. And don't even get me started on Binding Vows. I think Sukuna using Binding Vows has saved them more than Gege Akatami himself. I'm honestly starting to think Sukuna has created the binding vow in the first place. Every time Sukuna got put into a tight situation, he would use a binding vow out of nowhere. My whole argument is just the fact that Sukuna had Ajito and Maharaga. And like I said before, without those two, Gojo wins 9 times out of 10. And I don't want to hear from a single person saying Gojo couldn't have won because the main character has to beat the villain. First of all, Gojo could have been the main character. I mean, who knows? Originally, Yuta was the main character. Gege can't make up his mind worth of anything. And most importantly, everyone's favorite manga and anime, the main character didn't defeat the villain. Hunter Hunter. Honestly, Gon just sat there for half the fight and really didn't do anything. But that's for another video, so let's not get into that. But that's the end of my video. Does Sukuna really defeat Gojo if it's a fair 1v1? You tell me. But before you go, like, subscribe, and comment down below what you think. And I'll see you in the next video.